Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Flies and ticks have really come on strong the past few weeks in Oklahoma and here to talk about it this morning is Justin Talley, our Extension Livestock Entomologist. And Justin, you and the team have been conducting some research out here this morning. Give us an idea of what you have going on. Yes, for the past three weeks we've been sampling ticks and flies off cattle and we're trying to match it up to a fecal chemistry profile that's in conjunction with uh, Dr. Pete Till at Texas A&M University. We're one of his sampling sites and what we've noticed through this project is our, our ticks and flies have really increased in their population loads. And as we've seen in the last few weeks that that has really happened. Give us an idea of what the scenario has been and, and kind of what the conditions have been to, to make that happen. Yes, yeah, so the conditions the last two weeks have been ideal for ticks and flies, and especially for flies when our temperatures at nighttime don't go below 50 degrees and hover around 60 degrees and our daytime temperatures are around 90 degrees, or 80, upper 80s. That's just ideal for flies to develop at a rapid rate. And now is the time. And, and so if you don't get anything out now, then uh, you could be dealing with uh, a significant fly population that it's hard to get ahead of. Let's talk about ticks now and kind of what the options are there in terms of treating the animal and maybe treating the space that the animal kind of lives in. So ticks are one of the most common problems in Oklahoma, especially for Oklahoma cattle producers. And it's, it's a two pronged approach because it's not only uh, the ticks on the animal, it's the ticks out in the pasture. So when you have ticks out in the pasture, that's the most challenging thing to deal with because it's hard to manage ticks in a large area. And also it's a hard to manage an area that it, it may not be conducive to put out a, an insecticide or do any kind of management that you can change your, your forage quality. We do know that if you br burn periodically your pastures, it reduces the tick load, but it's a good burn, not a burn that uh, just does the surface of the grass. The other issue is that if you put a product on an animal, is that know how it works. There's a lot of products that are porons that are gonna last about three weeks at most. Most of our sprays that when you spray animals for ticks, you need to get a really thorough spray on that animal. Now we hear about, of course, you know, tick-borne illnesses that impact humans. Are some of those, is there some of that same risk for livestock? So the main risk to livestock is anaplasmosis. And, and ticks are the main vector of anaplasmosis, meaning they are a biological vector. They're not only transmitting it, but that, that bacteria is replicating within the tick. So if a tick feeds on an infected animal, and then falls off that animal, then the tick is still replicating that pathogen. So when they feed on an uninfected animal, they have a high uh, incidence rate of infecting that, that animal with anaplasmosis. Is now the window of opportunity for, for tick treatment similar to fly treatment, or what, what is the repetition there? So basically with tick treatment, it's all about your location. And sometimes it's depending on well, how much wildlife you have going through your, your property. Wildlife can bring ticks onto your property. Uh, a cattle manager can do everything right by treating his animals now, but still have ticks in July and August. So we certainly want to start now, but keep thinking about it all the way through you know, July and August as well. Okay, Justin, thanks a lot and, and best wishes on the research for you and your grad students out yeah. here. 